I'm so happy to have you here today, Anna. Thank you so much for your time. Um, just introducing everyone to Anna. Anna is a, a, a fabulous, fabulous being um, and has been, oh, we met in Melbourne. Um, you've done my mentorship program. I think we did it in my lounge room at that stage when I lived in, yeah. in Elwood. And, um, and now we meet weekly at our meditation group. And yeah, it's just a beautiful circle of women that come together very mm. um, Anna, Anna, I'm going to introduce all of you and the audience to Anna now. Anna Jimena Torres is a Colombian Australian clinical psychologist that works in the eating disorder field using a weight inclusive model of care. Committed to the dismantling of body oppression through the practice of embodied compassion and humanizing therapy. She is a member of the Australian Psychological Society, a member of the Australian and New Zealand Academy of, uh, for Eating Disorders, and is a member of Health at, at Every Size Australia. I'm going to also pop Anna's uh, contact details so you can be in touch with her if you find anything that we talk about interesting and you'd like to reach out to her, and I'll pop them in the comments. Um, but welcome, Anna, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Erin, so much for having me here and for inviting me on this on this gift that I give the community and that, you know, that we can share. Um, you know, I've, I've been following you for many years. And so this is a pleasure that now I get to give something back um, to your community, which is which has been so giving to me. So thank you. Uh, that gave me goosebumps. Hmm. That's awesome. I, I just love actually the, the the circle that we've created over the last two years that mm. has just been in a combination of such intelligent women who are in service to the community or to mm. your own individual communities. Um, we've got psychologists and social social workers, workers and nurses, and nurses. Mm. So it's it's teachers. Uh, and teachers and it's just sort of brought me to this point where I've wanted to extract this fabulous information out of your brain um, because I come from the esoteric energetic space mm -hmm. and I'm so I've always been so obsessed and interested in how the brain works with that subtle emotional stuff that, that mm -hmm. in this body of ours yeah um, and I guess you and I have connected from this place of embodiment as well. Oh. And so when I learned more about what you do and how you integrate mental health and, mm. you know, in a healthy way, it, mm. it is through uh, embodiment. Mm. Um, but I would like to start with um, what you consider as an emotion. What is yeah. emotion? Yeah. Um, I think it was you who taught it to me. Um, more than any of the uh, multiple degrees that I ever did, um, energy in motion. Mm. Um, and I would say that, so I'll, I'll first start with a few disclaimers. So one is um, I am a cognitive behavioral therapist. Um, and so I'll be speaking today from that position, um, but I honor and respect all other traditions of knowledge um, and of wisdom. Um, mm. I'm also speaking from uh, a privilege of my whiteness, of education, of finance, um, and of you know having a body that is within sort of the average um, domain. And so I have a lot of privileges that have been unearned. Um, and so I invite people who, who when they hear this conversation today, um, you know, I know that there are many different lived experiences and not everything that I will say will be um, able to include or I will be as mindful as I possibly can to um, encompass all the intersectionalities that may be present um, today. Um, but feel free to contact me um, to clarify me anything, to call me out on anything, um, to help me grow. This is something that, you know, I'll, I will do my best, um, but not always get it right. Mm. Um, so also, you know, um, because I do work in the field of eating disorders, I recommend that anybody who finds conversations about eating disorders or about bodies and about sizes, um, or shape, um, I don't know yet if that's going to be coming up, but I definitely just kind of want to give everybody a heads up. That's the world I live in. And so 
that may be some of the examples that I use. So just make sure that you stay as safe as possible um, with what you consume and what content you listen to. Mm -hmm. So what is an emotion? Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's a long way of starting a conversation. Hey, no, um, it's, it's really nice to set that boundary and that, like a container. Yeah. Um, so there's lots of different ideas in what we think an emotion is. Um, you know, in the classical sense, an emotion is a felt sensation. It's a, a neurological, um, biological, neurochemical response, um, which is, um, again, which is ignited or triggered by our perceptions and our sensations. So that can mean a lot of things. Um, and, and it's, you know, it's just an, it's an electrical signal. It's just a spark. Mm. but we complicate it by um, because we're human beings and we love complicating things. Um, but we also, because we're very rich and we're very multifaceted. So at the beginning of all this, you know, you've got a situation, that situation you perceive through your sensation. So your senses, and we have external senses, but we also have internal senses. So introception, and the ability to feel ourselves and feel the different changes that are happening in us. Um, and a situation or event can be external or internal. Um, and then we interpret it. We add meaning to this thing. We, and this is a cognitive process, um, which there is then, uh, that is connected to a story of I or a story of me or my world. And the more personalized this story becomes, or this, this, what we would call evaluation of this information, the more I'm going to generate a response in my body. Mm, response. And that's a response. Mm. And look, with all the technology, and hopefully one day the technology will be better, we'll be able to figure out whether it was the thinking that happened first and then the, the sensation or the sensation happened and then the thinking. So at the moment, we've just simplified it and say it co-emerges. Mm -hmm. yeah. So simultaneously, I receive information and I make an evaluation and I have some body sensations. Yeah. And because I, you know, we love being humans, we then interpret those sensations. And emotions then are information that we have in our body, from our body, that help us engage with the world. So from these emotions or from this experience, more than just my head, more than just the story that I tell myself, I am going to move in a certain direction. Mm. I either move away from something that I don't like, something that I'm avoiding that's this dangerous or unpleasant, um, or I'm going to move towards. I'm going to move towards things that I find pleasurable, um, meaningful, interesting. Mm. So lots of, um, so when we, when we think about, you know, what is it that I need? What do I need to listen to? Well, our body's got the information. It's just our head gets in the way. Because already um, I'm, I'm seeing with or hearing from all of that information that already so many layers have just kind of crashed in on one another. And now I don't even know what, what, it began with what started and where did I begin? Was it the sensation now? Because now a lot of other things have come into play. And so I don't even know. And now I feel overwhelmed by everything that's going on. And how do I trust myself now to go back to what I need to guide me? Yeah. And so there's this, all this, so we, so this, the cognitions or the thinking that we have um, they're important. Of course, they're important. They're part of our story, but they're not free. Mm. You know, they're not always our, um, they are influenced by our socio historical background, our experience, our lived experiences, our privileges, our oppressions. Um, you know, it, it, so we really need to learn how to be within ourselves. Yeah. Um, and Western culture, Western science has been historically about disembodiment. Yeah. So 
here, that's have a, this distraction and have this distraction. Yeah, do this. Do this and well, and like, and that your mind and your mind and your thinking is separate from your body. Um, and that's not true. I my body and my mind are are together, they are one. Um, and so therefore I need to be at one with all this information. But more on that. Um, before I go there, I want to kind of um, make sure that everybody understands that the sensations we feel in our bodies are temporary yeah. because this body is temporary and therefore the experiences we have, no matter how long or short they may seem, are still temporary. So when you, I'd like everybody to kind of think about a moment of pure joy, absolute joy, please don't disclose. Um, and you'll notice that there is a moment in where you begin to notice those sensations of joy. And then there's this, almost this crescendo of joy and a staticness. And then it just starts to kind of drop. And that is the normal evolution and trajectory mm. of every single emotion. Okay. So how, how, why, will we, <laughs> why were we taught that this, feeling is because I just want to go back to the meaning because I feel no. like before we get all overwhelmed go back to what you've placed as a meaning like meaningful that mm. sensation had a meaning for you and that's mm -hmm. where it started to kind of come in and crash down mm. um and then the second part to that I'm writing these notes as you're talking because I'm loving everything that you're saying is to be with ourselves and if we can mm -hmm. be with that crescendo of mm -hmm. wavelength and and then begin to understand that there's always going to be the wavelength just mm -hmm. like the heartbeat boom boom boom, boom. Mm -hmm. understand that all of these sensations are going to have this pattern of coming in and out then we're not going to necessarily chase the peak all the time and I think this is what I kind of wanted to touch on as you said this because um, it was a beautiful like way of describing it through the visual there that I feel that we're always trying to then chase Step. that mm. feeling mm. Mm. and then we get caught caught in that pattern yeah so with joy we want that crescendo we love it and we think that anything either side is a bit lackluster mm -hmm. And that is the meaning we've attributed to this. Mm -hmm. This is our social conditioning, our internal conditioning. And this is where we evaluate and we say, this part of happiness is the only one that matters. Mm. And I love it. And I must, not I'd like to, but I must be there at all times. Yeah. And so we have all of these kind of problems with people trying to be overly positive all the time. Yeah. Don't be overly positive. It's just weird. <laughs> the same thing happens with sadness and anxiety and anger. With sadness, there is a, a beginning and developing a sadness. And there is just like in happiness, a crescendo of sadness. And it is beautiful and glorious. And then it begins to subside. Mm. Right. We have, for some reason, unknown to me, labeled some experiences of some feelings more positive and pleasant than others and therefore we should only have the pleasant ones and never have the unpleasant ones mm. that doesn't work that way yeah because feelings or emotions as we're, we're calling them here are there to guide us to be our messengers to help us connect what our brain and our body are experiencing. Mm -hmm. And so what we tend to do is that when we start to feel sad or we start to feel anxious, even when we feel angry, we curtail it. We move away from it. We avoid. Yeah. We suppress. Yeah. And that is to deny ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then we get into like hooked up into like, you know, your my three top favorites, right? Drugs, sex, and rock and roll. Yeah. And we... <laughs> We, we move away from ourselves. And so we no longer understand that feelings go like this in a little wave. We no longer really understand emotions. We, we no longer have any contact with um, our, our body, our experiences. 
And so we're all head. We're all thinking. Mm. And we think we're logical. And we think that, you know, that that's the best to, to have no feelings or an absence of feeling is the most logical way. They lie to us. Mm -hmm. um, Just so, there's been mm. no good role modeling out there. Mm. It's, been, it's been lost. It's been, there has been, there's, it's just been lost with many things, many competing um, values and movements. But when we reach deep into our ancestry, when we reach deep into ourselves, into our lineages, um, we find, we find that it's always been there. That's why I love our circles every Monday mm. night because we come and we meet as women doing yeah. this work, you know, making it a, a, a normal thing. We celebrate one another. Mm. We, we cry. We hold, hold each other's face. Yeah. And we hear how normal so many different ranges of just experiences and, and how we're all responding is, is yeah. how normal it is normalizing so, it so so normal um also an emotion cannot exist unless it is coherent and cohesive with whatever you believe in yeah so if you say i don't care yet you're having high anxiety or anger or intense experiences of emotion i can call bullshit Mm. because what you're saying or what you are saying to us or to or yourself and yes. what you're experiencing are two different things yes and that feels out of control yeah because when we're not aligned mm, stuff happens this is what happened to me oh when, when i woke up i finally mm -hmm. did this retreat and had this mind-blowing experience and started to become aware of things and actually became aware of my body Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, my body feels things and I'm crying uncontrollably. I don't know why. And then I started going down that spiritual path and I started having started having oh, just experiencing what it was like to be in my body, but having these spiritual um, mm. theories in my mind going, oh, no, uh, you know, I don't care. But hold on a sec. I'm having this feeling. <laughs> I'm crying and I clearly care about something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I was, I was so far in the love and light that was bypassing all of the stuff I was actually feeling. And then I started to come around after a lot of different things happened and a lot of shadow stuff came up yeah. for me to realize and recognize that those two things weren't aligning. What I was mm. trying to tell myself and what I was actually experiencing were two different things. Yeah. 